Hi, I'm Paula Radcliffe and I've travelled here to beautiful Dubai for the 2016 Standard Chartered Dubai Marathon. Held along the iconic waterfront of this desert oasis and with the main event being known as both the richest and one of the fastest marathons in the world, it's 42 kilometres of running which never fails to entertain. With thousands more participating in two additional runs, it's naturally attracted people from all over the world. Previous years have seen the Dubai Marathon dominated by the Ethiopians, whose tactical approach, coupled with their sheer speed, has proved an ideal combination for success. As always, the days leading up to the event heightened the sense of anticipation around the city. For the competitors and officials alike, the fact that the race grows in stature and popularity year on year is a testament to the organisation and drama that the event in Dubai offers. Sebastian Coe, president of the IAAF, has watched how interest in the race has had a remarkable effect on the country as a whole in its lifespan. First marathon actually was 1998. It's had gold label status for the last five years and it's growing in reputation and it, that's really important and not just in terms of the elite fields. It's very important that more people are actually enjoying running, training for it, getting fit, physical activity. These are the two agendas that uh, any sport must always address. The IAAF president is keen to emphasise not only the high quality of the event, but also its inclusivity. Mass participation is a vital ingredient of its success, and this year's races brought a record number of runners from all parts of the world. A fine example is Tonya Nero, who this year became the first ever representative from the Caribbean. Usually the athletes who come from the Caribbean are mostly sprinters or probably field athletes and so it makes me very proud to know that I can represent the Caribbean. The appeal of the Dubai Marathon, when I looked at it and I saw the times, I saw how the athletes were doing very well, they were breaking their own records and for me I wanted to do well also and mo the, the, the most important thing is that I wanted to qualify for the, the Olympics to represent Trinidad and Tobago so I was thinking to myself that this is the best course to come to do it. Women's Marathon world record holder Paula Radcliffe has seen the Dubai Marathon grow to become a standout part of the athletic calendar. I think the understanding and a support of the city for sport and recreation and health and well-being is really great and it's really phenomenal to see how the Standard Chartered Dubai Marathon has grown in the time that it's been going, but just how sport has grown and how much more in touch um, people are with just getting active, getting active as a family and all the infrastructure that's in place. Meanwhile, a gold medal and a $200,000 cheque here can have huge consequences for the winner. As 2014 Victor and one of the pre-race favourites, Sergei Mekinen, would agree. After I won the Dubai Marathon, my life changed completely. Before, for example, I used to have to travel everywhere in a taxi. Now I have my own car. I also have my own house. So it's given me the chance to help my family. Winning in Dubai changed a lot for me. And so, with the formalities completed, let's take a look at the course the runners are about to embark upon. Let's have a look at the course. They actually head off in the opposite direction to last year onto Al Sufa Road. They run past the Dubai College Junction, past the entrance to Palm Island, and then they make a U turn at the one and only Mirage Hotel. You can see those distance markers there. It's onto uh, Jumeirah Beach Road, the main part of the course, past the iconic Burj El Arab and towards the Union flag. Pretty straight, as you can see. They won't have too much time to admire the scenery. I'm going to make another U-turn at the top, just past the mosque at Union House, and then they head back the way they've just come, past the Grand Mosque, the old Jumeirah Beach Park, and when they pass the Burj and Arab again, then they're nearly home. They'll make a left turn at the Madinat Jumeirah Junction, and then it's 500 metres to the finish, just before the Dubai Police Academy. As ever, a high-class starting lineup in Dubai, including five previous winners. In the men's race, we have Lemmy Bahanu defending his title against 2014 winner, teen sensation, Sagai Mekonen. On the women's side, meanwhile, Turfi Sagai and Mulu Saboka look likely to lead the Ethiopian challenge. 
So without any further ado, it's time for the 2016 Standard Chartered Dubai Marathon, which started at 6.30 in the morning, an hour earlier than usual this year. Our commentary team, Trevor Harris, Rupert Bell, and world record holder, Paula Ratcliffe. So away we go then, around about just over two hours ahead of the men, 2.20 or so for the women. It'll take them a little while to sort themselves out. And there you see it. <laughs> around about 3,000 amateur runners in the, in the marathon. We've also got a 10K run. We've got a 4K fun run. And when you add all the competitors together, it is the biggest mass participation sporting event in the Middle East, not just in the UAE, but in the Middle East. And it's firmly established now this marathon is one of the most eagerly awaited in the world, really. It, it is, and I think it has it really, really established itself, particularly in recent years, for being known for that very flat, very fast course, and then the standard of athletes that come here contribute further to that. So really, they do come here looking to have put a very strong run in at the start of the year, kick off 2016 in a strong way with a really, really strong performance here. So we're actually just being joined here by um, IWF President Sebastian Coe. What's your first impression? I mean, I know you were here last year, so weren't you? What's your first impression of, of this race? Because it's such an important sporting event here in the Middle East. Well, it's not just a major sporting event in the Middle East. It actually sort of kicks off the season, doesn't it? Uh, and, you know, this is a race that's grown in reputation dramatically in the last few years. I think it's... Some of the stats guys were telling me that from 4 to 17, it's some of the fastest times ever set anywhere in the world in a marathon. But only Kenyans and Ethiopians have ever won the men's races since we started in 2000. Seven Kenyans, nine Ethiopians. And in the women, as we watch them, an Ethiopian woman's won for the past nine years. We actually had uh, Russians winning the first four editions, but much smaller fields then, and since the the race has kind of gone up and up and up in standing. The Africans have taken over pretty much. So just coming up to the hour mark in the men's race and after another word from Paula, it'll be Rupert back. Yeah, we'll wait for the five kilometer split to, to come up there, but certainly still around and about that world record pace of um, Dennis Cometo in Berlin in 2014. So, the race well on. It remains to be seen whether they can increase the pace over the second half of this race in the way that Cometo did, but certainly the groundwork has been laid down for a very fast race so far. Well, they're on course for the course record anyway, which uh, Olympic years seems to be what they like to do here, for obvious reasons, because it sits perfectly in the calendar for Rio at the end of the year, and the Ethiopians have definitely turned up here to... Uh, Give their selectors a nudge, and this has been a, a blistering start. There is not a breath of wind here. You can see the guys looking across at each other and maybe just starting to, to wonder how much further these pacemakers are able to, to go into the race. They will have agreed to probably some of them to get to halfway, hopefully some beyond that to go to maybe 25k or 32 kilometer mark if they can. Well, the shot there of Burj Khalifa, this wonderful, uh, well, the tallest building in Dubai. Maybe it's still the tallest building in the world. I think it's all about the antenna at the top. That's what it comes down to. Uh, Tom Cruise likes to dangle outside of it when he's making Mission Impossible films. So uh, a shot, and it really is spectacular. And they've got this wonderful light display at night, which is almost like a, ca a cascading light. And it's so spectacular for the uh, people who come here to watch the uh, nightly... Uh, light show and fireworks display in front of the uh, Burj Khalifa. They're part of the uh, Ethiopian support, which is getting louder. With one of the world's most famous landmarks behind them, we take a break from the race to meet last year's winner, Lemmy Bahanu. The magnificent Burj Khalifa is a site that Lemmy Bahanu is particularly fond of, bringing back as it does memories of his stunning victory here last year. The 21-year-old took the running world by storm as he crossed the finish line last year in 2.05.28. For me, the Dubai Marathon is such a huge thing, a massive event. I was so happy when I won. I knew it would be a very fast race, but I wasn't expecting to win it. When I did win, it was an amazing feeling for me. 
Perhaps what made Bahanu's victory so impressive was that he was such a novice at this level, competing against some of the greats in the sport. Even he couldn't have predicted just what a life-changing moment winning the Dubai Marathon would turn out to be. In many ways, I am like many other athletes who win the Dubai Marathon. It really has made a huge difference to my life. Like the others, it meant that I had a chance to buy many things, so it has changed my life a lot. That win in Dubai would kick off a successful year for Bahanu, which continued with a victory at the Warsaw Marathon in April. He realises that his success has made him a fearsome opponent, and going into this year's Dubai Marathon, he's aware of the pressures involved in being the reigning champion. I know there is pressure, but I have trained really hard and my preparation has been really good because I'm aware that the race is always very fast. I have huge respect for all the other athletes. All I can do is come well prepared and do my best to win the race. The Dubai Marathon is the start of what promises to be a huge year for Bihanu. He'll be keen to repeat his success here from 2015. While further ahead on the horizon, another huge challenge awaits as he bids to make the Ethiopian Olympic team. According to the Ethiopian Athletics Federation rules, you cannot qualify for the Olympics only by winning this marathon. However, it would be a big help for my hopes to qualify if I were to win another marathon here. So I will try my hardest to win this race and hopefully I will get in the Olympic team. For now, though, all eyes on Dubai, and as we rejoin the race, Bihanu was sitting comfortably in the leading pack. You marathon runners know every stride and every second, and they will be aware, their clock in their head is telling them, I'm going to go for this. They're not, they know they're on, on the verge of something special here. One or two of them will be thinking, I am feeling on the top, in top, top position. One more turn in front of them, and that's not a few, not far from the finish, but now they come back down the Jumeirah Beach Road. They've made the turn. There's the split through uh, 26 kilometers, 115.45, 17 seconds ahead of world record pace that was set in Berlin in 2014. And Washoon, I have to say, he is absolutely, he's the surprise package at the moment, but he too looks as if he's just maybe the one who's going to struggle as they go through the 30k mark and we're still on course there is no let up it is 127 21 that's 16 seconds this is sharp this is very sharp and now absolutely the questions are getting asked by the pace and by the racers in there trying to to make their mark but they will be well aware now that they've gone through that 30 kilometer mark ahead uh, of Kimeto's pace. He did run very, very fast from 30 to 35 uh, kilometers in Berlin, and we'll see whether they're able to, to match that and to, to stay ahead of that pace here. But certainly they've given themselves a very good chance. And behind that, Abera and Ayala, not totally out of this yet, and may be able to, to rally a little bit and rejoin this, this well. group of four. I'm not sure how surprised we should be that the race is, is as quick as it is. You go back to 2012, we had four men running sub two hour five minute times, and Avshera, who won that year, 204.23, which is still the course record, that was the fourth quickest ever at the time. That was actually on his marathon debut, unbelievably. So there was a history of quick times, maybe not quite as quick as uh, we've seen here, but can they, with, can they maintain it for another half an hour or so? You can now see the, the leading women group probably coming up to around about the 30k marker. Yeah, Sege right in the middle of your shot. She's been there or thereabouts right from the start. And if you were, if you're having to take a little uh, guess from here, I think I would, uh, I think I would go with her because her, her course form much as we were saying with the men, she loves racing here too. All of these guys will have gone through bad patches. I mean, within any marathon, no matter 
how good a day you're going. Dennis Cometa, when he ran the world record, would still have gone through rough patches within that race. Uh, and what really you have to focus on is, is how you've got through those rough patches in training and knowing that you will come through it and you will start to feel stronger. I but think we can we safely now, yeah. say the world record's not going to go it, today. I don't <laughs> think uh, they are going to be able to get back to that today. I think the course record still could come under threat, um, but they are starting to slip more and more um, outside of that world record pace as they hit into this vital closing 10 kilometers of the race but also the section that Dennis Kometa was able to really raise his splits in Berlin and they're not able to do that maybe because they did start off a little bit too quickly to be able to, to attack that here. Lemma right there looking extremely relaxed. And Wasserloon as well has been able to work himself back on so it now becomes a, a, a group of five so they're not succeeding in whittling down the group and increasing their chances uh, of being on the podium. Well, that, the, that the group is getting a little bit bigger. And, and the, that predicted race time, if accurate, if the pace continues as it is, that's going to break the course record by around about half a minute. On the women's side, though, I, I would put my money on Sege. Well, she's just established a little gap. It looks like she may have timed this to perfection. Quick glance over the shoulder will tell her that the uh, surprise package for Iso, uh, she's dropped her effectively, unless Pariso can find a second win from somewhere, which looks unlikely. Sege could be around 25 minutes away from uh, winning another standard charter Dubai marathon. But uh, Bahanu now has, a, has been able to, to regain contact on the back of that. And maybe now he's in turn going to take his turn as he comes through now just to, to pick up the pace again. And look, he's now looking around. Come on, guys. Uh, see, I was playing with you there. I had a little bit more <laughs> left than you. I was letting on. Yeah. He's put the hammer down and uh, Abera trying to go with him. And Lemmer, for the first time, looks like he might be struggling. He's back and forth now. We're past two hours. And Bahanu trying to make this back-to-back -back wins in Dubai. It looks as though Mekinen and Lemmer at the moment were just caught a little unawares by that break. He's got himself 10 metres over those two, but Avera's still trying to hang tough and go with him. Yeah, I mean, I think Mekinen was not so much caught away. I think he saw it coming, but he wasn't able to react. And now he is trying to react over a more sustained effort to maybe try and pull in a bearer who was able to react immediately, but Bahanu had that plan. He went through that marker, and in his mind, he knows this course, he knows what it's like to win here, and he just put in that move there, and you can see the damage that it's done to that group, but a bearer still hanging in. He is. They're still on the main road, as you can see. When they turn left, it's about 500 metres to the finish. They know whatever happens, it's going to be a 1, 2, 3, 4 for, uh, for uh, Ethiopia again. But they never get bored with it. Yeah, Lemma from, from looking good now would be the one who you're going to say is going to finish off the podium here today. Probably will be rewarded with a personal best though. Um, but the, the racing up ahead is, I mean, you can see there the, the view that Mekinen has of the two guys in front, and he's not fully out of the yet. Well, they're into the last kilometre, as you can see, and Bahanu continuing to ask a question of Abera, and Abera at the moment seems to be struggling to answer it. He's still in touch, just, and Lemma surely too far behind to challenge the goals here. Yeah, I think so. You can see the little bit of a look behind from Bahanu, but a, a lot of concentration, gritting of the teeth as well, but not as much as Abera is gritting his teeth, trying to hang on to him and trying to hang on to that second position as well. Another look behind from Bahanu, just to see exactly where Abera is. He has to maintain this, a look at the watch. You really don't need to do that, mate. Just keep <laughs> looking ahead. You want to be looking at the finish. It really does not matter right now in terms of trying to win this race, what is on your watch. And um, it is a sign of weakness for me. If, if I'm a bearer running behind and you keep looking back by like, like that, then that's a sign that you're under pressure and that you're doubting your ability to finish and to close out these final 500 metres as you need to. Well, you saw the turn. He's trying to drop a bearer who's still just about in touch and in the worst ways he's keeping Bahanu honest the finish line is in sight the gap is around about five or six meters Bahanu still looking strong but Abera 
is trying to close and maybe is just narrowing that gap a little bit. I think Bahanu has given Avera too much hope here and Avera, don't forget, has already run a massive personal best here today. So he's buoyed by that adrenaline. And now as he comes alongside, Look Bahanu at made a significant mistake in how much he looked back there because he gave hope to Avera and Avera now as he can see the finish line ahead of him and stretches out towards that, is going to make a massive step forward in his career here today. A massive shot result potentially on the cards here if Avera can hold on from Bahanu. Lemma is pretty much nailed on for the bronze. But a man with a, a personal best of around 2.09 is going to absolutely obliterate that. He's got last year's winner some, what, 10 metres back, just foreshortens it sli slightly, that shot. And we now, for the first time in this race, can look across and see approaching, entering now the final 100 metres of this. Avera looking as though he has this, and Bahanu there, for my money, on, on his face, he, he's thrown it in here, and he is running for second place. This is a massive turn-up. They won't get to Avera now. He's going to win his first major marathon and do it in style as well. It's going to be very close to a course record. What a run from Avera. Last year's winner, Bahanu, is going to be second. She can see the finish gantry ahead of her in that shot there, so she can go under 220. Can Briso behind her go under the 220 as well? Might be a big ask. No, I think so. I think we're going to see one woman finish under. Are we going to see the course record? come under threat she's definitely going to be close and looking back down the road i can now see her approaching we are sat right on the finish line so i would say maybe 150 meters or so to to go in this race for Sergei. she can now hear the ground swell and the noise coming from the ethiopians and horses and she can see the finish line with a clock on it ahead of her well one thing's for sure she's going to run a personal best 2.20.18 before today so that is definitely going to go. She's just going to be outside the course record here, I think, 2.19.31. So she won't get that. And I'm not sure she's that bothered. She comes home to win the Dubai Marathon here for the second time and win it by a country mile. So, once again, Dubai delivers a memorable and unpredictable marathon along with the seemingly customary Ethiopian celebration. The women's race produced the second fastest winning time in the history of the Dubai Marathon. Tirfa Sigai, the winner in 2013, regained her title with a personal best of 2 hours 19.41. Her compatriot Amani Bariso took silver with the fifth fastest marathon debut in history, while the bronze went to Meselek Malkamu. We caught up with the winner after the race. I am so happy. I won in 2013. Now I won again in 2016. In 2013, I felt that I wasn't so comfortable, but this year it was much better. I managed to run my personal best. My next challenge is to break the course record. On the men's side, Tesfaya Abera swept home in 2 hours, 4 minutes, 24, just one second shy of Ayala Abshiro's course record set in 2012. Defending champion Lemmy Bahanu had to settle for second this year, while the bronze went to 2014 winner Sagai Mekunen. Abera, like Sagai, reflected on a tough but ultimately successful race. Before, it has sometimes been easy for me after a few kilometers, but this race was really difficult. I'm really pleased I won. I'm so happy. The Dubai Marathon is about more than just the elite runners, though. Together with the main race, the 10-kilometer road race and the 4-kilometer fun run drew over 30,000 runners to Dubai, making it easily the largest mass participation event in the region. And the colour, the noise and the general celebratory feeling all combine to make it such a special event on the running calendar. The whole event we just enjoyed a lot. Every year we are having a lot of fun. I love the Dubai Marathon because it's great and it gets everyone involved and it keeps everyone fit and I can't wait to be back next year. You will dance, you will sing, you feel great. That is sport for everybody.
Thanks for watching this year's coverage of the Standard Chartered Dubai Marathon. We hope you enjoyed the coverage and look forward to seeing you again next year. Thank you and goodbye from Dubai.